Now, all this week, the circle is looking at schools that are going above and beyond the standard ways of teaching and trying new ways of getting kids to love learning. Today, our mate George McEncrow checks out a program developed by renowned educationalist Kathy Walker. It's fascinating. Have a look. This may look like unstructured, chaotic play, but these children are all working on a very special investigation project and they all have lots of one-on-one -on -one time with their teachers. The Walker Learning Approach is about personalised learning. This means the kids choose a topic they love, then literacy and numeracy skills are brought back to their favourite topic. So investigation time has three very specific components to it. We always start the day with a very specific tuning in where we talk to our focus children. Maya, where do you think you might intend to start your investigations today? In the fruit shop. In the fruit shop. How much do you think they'll cost today? Five dollars. Five dollars for a pineapple and a banana? The children go off and begin their investigations and then at the end of each session they come back for their reflection time where we talk about the learning that has happened that morning. The class might look casual, but the teacher is skillfully relating the kids' experiences back to the literacy and numeracy curriculum. Personalised learning and student engagement is at the centre of this philosophy. You and I, if we're engaged and if it's real, relevant and meaningful to us, then we're more likely to be involved and to understand it. All schools claim pretty much that they have individual learning programs. How does this distinguish itself from that? It's very easy to put up a placard and say we value the individual and that we personalise learning and yet there's so many schools that we walk into and then you see 25 cloned daffodils, 25 children all doing the gold rush. So many teachers start their planning with the topic yeah. whereas we start our planning with who is this child right now in front of us and what are our learning intentions. And who was this one? That's right, what number was that? Number 12. Now here he is, right here. What are the stats on this? We've got 15 years of data okay. and we show that there's a quadrupling of oral language skills. There's an incredible improvement in the engagement of all children, particularly boys and particularly the hoons of the class. Right, yes. And as you would expect, there's an inverse relationship with behavioural problems. If the child doesn't connect to the interest, if it's not something they want to know and need to know, and it's really much harder for them to learn. What's happened here, all children write. The same happens with the reading. They understand that reading is about making meaning. Right. It's not just barking at print. So true. Yeah. So what they do and they're just going through the numbers and yep, yep, yep. And yeah, well, you see, often children get stuck there mm. because they don't understand. You read for a purpose. Mm. Listen to me, listen to me. Well, you see kids learning in this way, where what they study comes from them, what they're interested in, and then it feeds back into other key learning areas. You can't help wonder, shouldn't this be the way all education goes? Great oh, story, you. You know, watching that, I just can't help but think, like I look at that young teacher and how important she is in their lives mm -hmm. every day. We should be paying those teachers more. How are you? Yeah, and I think, I mean, the good thing is you get people that are passionate, but I'm just worried that enough young people aren't going into it because I agree. there's not enough mm. reason to go into it yeah, compared to other professions. Yeah, agreed. Be watching tomorrow to hear about the school that has dogs in the classroom. Love that idea.